Hi guys, I'm just popping in for a quick uh, Facebook Live and I was going to give you one super important tip that will be the life-changing tip uh, if you do it every single day of your life. <laughs> Homeschooling, parenting, otherwise. Um, first of all, I'm going to tell you my life hack that I just learned. If you take your phone and you're looking around for a way to set up your phone for uh, a Facebook Live video, if you take your iPhone box and put the bottom inside the lid and you have a pop socket on your phone, you can rest the pop socket on the edge of your iPhone box and it's just the right size and shape to manage your um, uh, holding your phone if you haven't invested in a, some sort of phone holder. So anyway, life hack for you today. Okay, so the number one most important tip, I think, uh, to make homeschooling run well and to make our, our relationships more smooth is, um, is to not make it worse, okay? Whatever you're dealing with, whatever difficulty you are finding in your day, if you can find a way to not make it worse, that will be your become your best friend and your greatest go-to in uh, in being able to manage behavior and manage relationships and keep the relationships intact that you have. And I'd like to give a few examples of this, uh, how we can do that. For example, if your child is doing their math and they're having one of those, you know, great big hyper math meltdowns, if if you can think to yourself, okay, I need to, I need to invest in this somehow. I need to interact in this somehow. I need to manage this situation somehow. What can I do that won't make it worse? Okay, so for example, trying to force a child in the middle of a meltdown to do math is, is probably gonna get it, make it worse. Yelling at them is gonna make it worse for sure. Um, getting angry, uh, being uh, impatient, all those things are, are likely going to make it worse. But uh, if you say to them, hey listen, maybe, maybe it's time for a snuggle. Um, you know, we can, we can look at math later, but maybe right now what you really need is a snuggle or we can a little walk outside or something. So if we can think about ways that we can avoid making a problem worse, uh, that will be, <laughs> that will be really good for us. Um, if your children are bickering, uh, again, you know, yelling, impatience, uh, getting frustrated is, uh, is not, is likely to make it worse. So if you can think of something that's a, a diversion or a, um, a uh, suggestion that you could make to not make it worse, um, you know, to take them outside for a little play, to to let them fill up the sink with water and bubbles and, and divert them and yourself away from, from uh, the situation getting out of hand. Those would be really helpful things. Um, if your teens are, you know, mouthing off at you and, uh, you know, becoming sassy, n not engaging with them is is the greatest tool you have in your toolbox, right? Um, kind of in, in a sense, we don't ignore the behavior, it has to be dealt with, but it can be dealt with later. You don't have to get caught up in the heat of the moment. We can discuss, you know, sort of what went sideways or how you're supposed to talk to your mom. Um, you know, at another point in time, when the when the teenager is, or, or tween or whatever is, is uh, past the point of, of acting out and, and uh, spouting off at you. And I speak from experience here, so <laughs> it's not worth it. It's not worth fighting. Um, so if you can uh, take time to reflect on the situations that come up regularly in your life that create conflict, that become difficulties um, and, and how you respond to them that might make them worse uh, so that you can come up with a toolbox of ways to respond that will avoid making the, the situation worse, right? Um, one of the ways that we make things worse is very innocent. I think all parents um, have done this at one time or another, uh, but it, it's a, a very, I think, a very harming thing to say to our kids. Um, and in the context of homeschooling, it comes up is uh, is to say to your child, you should know how to do this, okay? When when we use a phrase like that, what, what we're really implying is that the child who is, for whatever reason, not being able to figure out how to do the thing they knew how to do yesterday, basically what we're applying is that they're lying, they're lazy, or they're dumb, okay? Now, 
they may have just forgotten. We, we have to look at our kids in the best light. We may, they may have just forgotten uh, what they did. You know, they may have, you know, they might be dealing with anxiety or distracted or something. May, they may well have just forgotten. Um, they may be lying that they knew how to do it yesterday. They may be lazy. Um, they may also not be particularly uh, smart in that particular area or, or not academically ready for, for that particular thing. But when we use that phrase, you should know this, it does imply something, you know, quite a bit um, more condemning, really. And so it's a, it's a phrase that we should not ask. And I think that, um, you know, even if they are, you know, lying or lazy and we want to weed out those bad habits, in the, in the context of what they're trying to learn right now, it's not really helping to, um, to highlight that. Yeah, absolutely, we need to deal with it. But outside of those circumstances, you know, um, you know if, if a child has a problem with lying, if a child has a problem with laziness, we need to find ways to deal with those issues outside of the circumstances that are going to cause sparks, right? Um, and make uh, learning unpleasant or, or impossible. So, I think it's important to ask ourselves the question, you know, what if somebody said to me, my employer, my spouse, you know, you should know this, I taught you this already. How does that make you feel? Um, and what is it highlighting? And is there some better way that you can address whatever the problem is that's going on there uh, with, with tenderness and with charity and uh, without creating um, a defensive, uh, defensive reaction in your child, right? So, um, you know, so it's important to sort of consider the adult version of that. Um, so I think it's really important as parents to take time to just reflect on situations that regularly happen in our homes that that heat up, that we overreact to, that um, become problem areas, right? And, you know, might, that might take a few days of watching the little... Um, uh, flares happen, right? And obviously they happen with some kids more than they happen with others. Watch those flares, watch what's happening, watch your own reaction and take time to reflect on how you might be making it worse and how you might then be able to make it better, right? If we don't take time for self-reflection, we're, we're not going to get very far in, um, in becoming better people, right? And becoming more responsive to that which uh, is uh, difficult for our children to handle, right? Um, so, uh, if, if on any given day, if you can say, um, you know, okay, what, what is it I'm doing? What is it I'm doing to, to make this worse? Right. And I really believe that a lot of times, um, what's going to change things is, is silence. Okay. Sometimes with silence, just take a moment to reflect. It doesn't mean you are not ignoring a situation. It's not being... Uh, a pushover. It just means that you're taking time to collect yourself and wondering, okay, do I deal with this in the heat of the moment? Or is this something that we could discuss later on that would be, um, that we're both going to be, I'm going to be more calm and my child's going to be more receptive if I deal with it later on. If I take a moment to reflect, maybe I'm going to recognize that I'm overreacting to a situation because we, we uh, tend to do that a lot. We have a lot on our plates. Um, and so sometimes the taking a moment also just allows uh, allows the emotions to spin out, right? To just kind of spin themselves so that we can then, um, you know, move forward. Uh, and it also gives us as, as adults a time, just sort of time to breathe. Um, and that's good training. It's really good training. It's really good modeling for our kids. We can train ourselves to just take a moment, breathe. Okay, how, how might I respond that this would... Uh, uh, not make the situation worse. Um, and I'm teaching my child to just, you know, instead of being reactive, to to think for a moment, to breathe for a moment, to be able to respond to a situation without, uh, you know, just, just being in reactive, defensive mode all the time, right? Um, so silence, uh, breathing, and sometimes you don't have to do that for very long to really sort of to get your head together and be able to respond in a more appropriate way, right, a more charitable way. Um, so I think personally that that's one of the most important decisions that you are going to make every day of your life is to decide not to make it worse. Uh, please forward me any questions that you may have. Um, we've got some great questions so far and I really appreciate those. Uh, most of them are in the, co in the comment um, section of, uh, of my posts today. Uh, if you want to have a look at any of those questions that have come up. 
Um, please continue to hand off your questions. And again, congratulations to Lisa Marie um, and on her 10th anniversary. So God bless. And uh, I'll be checking in throughout the day for any questions or comments.